Today, Triumph have announced the 2021 update for their awesome sporty retro bike, the Speed Twin, and I was fortunate enough to head to Hinkley last week to get a proper good look at it in the flesh. Now, I'm super excited about this one as it was already one of my favourite road bikes, retro or otherwise. And I don't think it's just me. The Speed Twin was the best seller in Triumph's modern classic lineup in the UK last year, and it has to be the most requested review for 2021 on my channel. Now, I'm happy to report that Triumph haven't disappointed with this update. They've taken an already awesome bike and added some extra spec in all the right areas to take it up an extra notch. So in this video, we'll cover it in full detail, the engine updates and performance improvements, the perfect tweaks to the brakes, fork and tyres, the modest and tasteful styling enhancements, and the price, which has gone up a bit, but I'll explain later why I think it's still good value. I was also lucky enough to speak to Stuart Wood, Triumph's chief engineer, to get some more detail firsthand, so stick around to the end to see that interview, but before we get into the nitty gritty, let's take a proper good look at it. So we'll start with some of the changes to the engine. Of course, like all the other Bonnevilles, they've had to be updated for Euro 5 emissions regulations. So the exhaust system's been changed, the emissions have been reduced. But the good news is, unlike the other Bonnevilles, this has had a bit of a genuine change in the way that it delivers its torque and power. So first up, the red line's gone up by 500 RPM, as has the revs at which it produces its peak power. But on top of that, there's an extra 3 PS. So that's 100 PS at 7,250 RPM, perhaps more significant though, for me anyway, is that peak torque is now produced lower down in the revs by 500 RPM, so that's 112 Newton meters at 4,250. That just makes it even more usable on the road, and that's what I really like about these 1200 Bonnevilles. There's bags of torque, and it delivers it even lower now, and it means that you don't really need to be like banging down the gears to keep the engine singing. It'll just absolutely fly when you give it some throttle. We'll talk about some of the specific changes to the engine when we've talked to Stuart later, but one of the key features is a new lighter crankshaft. There's a 17% reduction in inertia, and that means that the engine spins up quicker. So it's also gonna feel more lively on the throttle. You still got the six speed gearbox and the slip assist clutch. The only negative, I suppose, of the Euro 5 work is that fuel consumption is up by about 5%. But for me, I'd take it, given that it produces a bit more power at the top, and produces its torque even lower. But not only should it be quicker in a straight line, but some of the changes to the chassis mean that it's a better handling bike as well, or so Triumph claim. Hopefully we'll find out soon when we get a chance to ride one. A big change is the brakes. They weren't bad on the previous gen. It had Brembo four-part calipers, I think, on 305 mil discs. But on this generation, you now get Brembo M50 calipers, so radially mounted monoblock calipers for extra crispness on the initial bike, and Triumph also say a better feel as well and they're on larger diameter 320 mil discs. If you can cast your mind back to the previous bike as well, it had regular right way up suspension. This has had an update to the fork, so you've got a Marzocchi upside down fork, 43 mil. And generally the benefits of like upside down forks are less unsprung weight because the thinner bits at the bottom, so you should get better responsiveness and also the thicker bits at the top, so less twisting from braking and turning. So generally performance should be tighter and better handling on this bike. The shocks are pretty much the same, but the settings for both the fork and shock have been optimized for this bike, so they work well well and improve the handling overall. Last up in terms of handling, we've got new tires on this, so Metzler Racetech RRs. Those are proper good sporty tires, the sort of thing you find on the Speed Triple. Although the old one had Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3s, you know, they were decent tires, but these should be even stickier 
and again add to the handling on this bike. Elsewhere the chassis is pretty much the same so the frame and stuff I think the seat height is up by like two mil but I think the headline is that those changes to the brakes the suspension and the tires should really transform this bike in terms of handling. Now from a tech perspective you know the Speed Twin is a very simple bike and I think a lot of people like that about the retros. There's no TFT dash with connectivity or anything you've just got three riding modes so rain, road and sport. ABS which isn't switchable, traction control which is switchable and then the throttle map and TC are optimized for each of those riding modes. Those have been updated this year to complement the new performance specs, but elsewhere it's pretty much the same. I mean, from a tech perspective, probably the highlights are the LED daytime running light, LED indicators, a nice LED tail light as well. You've got analog clocks, a twin clock, so you've got speed and revs, but also some LCD inserts that give you all the other sort of riding data. There is a USB socket. You can spec uh, tire pressure monitoring, heated grips, but other other than that, it is super simple and all the better for it, in my opinion. It's also worth adding that Triumph have just announced a tie-in with Beeline Moto, which is a small navigation device. Check out any of my previous videos, especially like Moto vlogs where I'm actually on the bike and you'll see one mounted on my bars. I'm a massive fan. It's a really nice, simple way to navigate and easy to stick on any bike. The Triumph version is branded up, so it'll match your bike nicely. It'll really suit a retro bike like this. And I suppose the other good thing is you can spec it as an accessory. So, you know, if you're financing your bike, you can just add it into the total cost. The other thing is they're offering double the warranty. So it's a two year warranty if you buy the Triumph version for the exact same cost. Another area in which we've seen some tweaks to the Speed Twin is the styling. So you'll notice that the graphics are slightly different on the tank. There's a red version, matte storm gray, and then a a jet black, a plain gloss black version. 200 quid more for the red and the matte storm gray. The jet black, you know, that makes a great option if you want something that's stealthy or if you're gonna customize it anyway. I mean, it's a great basis for customization. In fact, I've got a video of a customized Speed Twin on my channel. I'll link to it in the description so you can see what kind of thing you can do with this platform. A big improvement for me is the silencers. So the last gen had a kind of matte black look. I didn't feel like it looked as premium as even some of the more affordable modern classics like the Street Twin and the T100, for example. This version has a brush stainless steel finish in the body of it. And for me, that just looks like a big improvement. There's not even really any need to look for an aftermarket exhaust if you like the sound. And it is a great sounding bike with that 270 crank. Other visual tweaks are the headlight brackets. There's new 12 spoke wheels. So the previous gen had seven spoke, is that right? seven spoke wheels. They looked a little bit like the wheels off a speed triple or something. I think these ones with more spokes, they give a bit of that classic style to it, almost looking like a spoke wheel. And I think they really set it off nicely. You still get the really nice looking brushed mudguards front and rear, but you've actually got a mudguard mount on the front now that looks a bit more like the thrust and a bit more sporty, given that it has to be mounted on that upside down fork. But overall, the best thing about this bike for me is the stance, kind of out of the Bonneville range. It's got the most aggression to it has a slightly forward tilt and I think it just looks brilliant. The details are great, but overall I think from a distance, this is just such a great looking bike. So the big question is what's the price? And it has gone up by 300 quid to 11 grand from 10,700 last year. A few of the Bonnevilles have gone up by a few hundred quid this year. And I think mostly it's justified given that there have been increments in spec. But for me, this is the standout in terms of value for money delivered in 2021. 300 quid doesn't really feel like much to say you get in more power at the top, better delivery of torque in the lower mid range, better forks, better tires, better brakes, some great styling as well. For me, it's just a bit of a no brainer, but let's speak to Stuart to get a bit more detail on the bike. So I guess a good starting question for this bike is it was already quick and lively and fun to ride. So what prompted you to give it such a significant update? Is that based on customer feedback or you just fancied it? <laughs> no, it's always, it's always based on customer feedback. We really do listen hard to what people want mm. and we, we take note. As you said, the bike's always been focused, a sporty classic. Mm. We want that sports feel, we want that performance, um, but you still want to retain the attitude and the style. So yeah, the, the upgrades, both engine and chassis, all based on, on feedback and 
they're all linked. So they all help one another achieve yeah. the, the overall goal. So you mentioned the, the engine there. I wondered if you could give us a bit of detail on how you've achieved those improved performance figures with regards to the tweaks internally. Okay, well, you've mentioned the inertia. That's a lighter, lower inertia crankshaft, but also a rare earth alternator as well. Okay. So there's extra spec in there, but that's to reduce the inertia. So 17% reduction in inertia. Now right. what that gives you is faster pickup on the throttle, more responsive, but it also aids the handling because we always design bikes to work as a whole, not, not just an engine or a chassis. So when you're riding at high RPM and at low road speeds, mm. that lower inertia on the engine really does aid the agility of the bike. Now, in terms of the performance, we're running a higher compression ratio. So we've got a different piston with machined crown. Uh, we've got higher lift valves, both intake and exhaust, and longer duration. We've tweaked the intake ports as well. So overall, that gives you uh, more performance. We've even increased the combustion pressures. You know, we've done a lot of work on the tune, and as you mentioned, then the traction control mm. and the maps all change with that to complement that performance. And that was all about not just making more power, but spreading the torque as well, which is the absolute joy of this 1200cc, 270-degree crank engine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned sort of like uh, more lift and duration on the cams, and I, I mentioned that fuel economy was slightly worse, although, I mean, it's marginal. Is that kind of the challenge you're faced with now with stricter emissions regulations that you're having to give up a bit more fuel to get similar performance figures? Well, actually now, we, because it is increased performance, yes, there is a little more fuel consumption on the cycle, the drive mm. cycle for, for emissions, but it always has done and always will do depend on how you're riding. So yeah. depend, and, and it is a sports engine with more response, more power and a wider spread of torque. So I think that's what, well, that's certainly what people have been asking us for and it certainly feels fantastic in the bike. With regards to the sort of exhaust system, you said there were quite a few changes there as well to clean it up. I wondered if you could go into some of those as well. Well, what we've done, we've added some more tech. Mm. We've got a secondary air injection system now. So that feeds air into the exhaust system to help clean up uh, any, any emissions. We've added two more catalysts. Mm -hmm. So we've got the catalyst that's underneath the engine, which we've always had. But in addition, there's one in the front of each of the silencers as well. Okay, interesting. And how has that added any weight? I couldn't figure it out because I got a dry weight for the previous gen and a wet for this one. Yeah, there is a very small increase in, in weight, but that's more than accounted for by the increased power and the increased um, spread of torque. So it's still pretty much on a par with the Thruxton in terms of weight, a very kind of agile. Yeah, it? it is, absolutely. In terms of better braking, um, I think in the briefing, you talked about a sharper feel, initial bite, and then better power and feel through the delivery of brake power, let's say. How much of that is down to just the calipers being upgraded? Because I think you've got a similar master cylinder there than the previous gen. Okay, the master cylinder is the same. It's um, radial um, Brembo mm -hmm. master cylinder, um, but the, the calipers and the pads have changed and that increase in diameter from 305 to 320 mil on the discs all comes together to give the feel that we wanted, a nice solid lever feel and really good stopping performance. And then uh, we've got the new upside down fork. It's not adjustable though, uh, as you might find on something like a Thruxton. I wondered if you could tell us about that decision and why you've decided to emit that on this bike. Okay, like you said with the, the tech, mm. it's a very straightforward motorcycle. Mm. And again, we're trying to offer a bike that's very, very accessible. It's a very, very keen price for this bike. Yeah. But with all the performance, we didn't want to give up any handling. We wanted upside down forks. We wanted to match that with the brakes as well because we've got more stopping power and more bite. So again, a little more control at the front. Yeah. It all fits together to make for a more agile, um, sharper handling bike with better engine response. Hopefully it's not too long till we get to ride one. From a riding perspective, you know, we talked about the specs and technical changes, but what would I expect to feel versus the previous gen when I jump on this bike? Well, it's going to be very similar, except a little bit more of everything. Right. So you're going to have more throttle response. You're going to have a broader spread of torque. You're going to have more power at the top end with an extra 500 RPM mm -hmm. as well. You're going to have sharper, more agile handling and much better grip from the tires, all just to give you that fun just to let you fully enjoy this bike. Brilliant. All right, well, thanks so much for your time. Oh, cheers, Rob. So as you can tell, I'm super excited to ride this bike. We've got the launch in about a month's time. So 
you know, stick around. If you're not subscribed already, then do hit subscribe if you want to see my verdict on what it's like to actually ride it on the road. I reckon it's going to be up there as one of Triumph's best road bikes beyond the sort of uh, modern classic range at the moment because of the way that it delivers that torque. It's got a slightly more relaxed position than the Thruxton, so I think it's more versatile and usable. And versus the Roadsters, you don't really have to like rev it in the same way to get the most out of it. I really think this is going to be a great bike, so please do join me then for that video.